What's up guys, in this video we're going to go over how to take your stock Mazda Speed 3 or 6 all the way to 800 wheel horsepower. It's going to be a long video and kind of boring, so if you don't care about Mazda speeds, just wait for tomorrow's video and it'll be a lot more exciting. But in this video we're going over every modification you could possibly need to make 800 wheel horsepower. Now. If your car is completely stock, your Mazda Speed is completely stock rather, then you're going to need an access port, high pressure fuel pump internals, a catalyst downpipe, and an intake. Now those are the first uh, four modifications you're going to need, the basic step to get going. Uh, you're always going to want to get a Pro Tune. If you're not running a Pro Tune and your car runs like crap, that is the reason. Always get a Pro Tune from Purple Drink, Freak Tune, Tune by Nishan, or some other Pro Tuner. If you're paying good money for a Pro Tune, that means you're getting a solid tune and they will do a great job. All tuners are uh, pretty good with Mazda Speeds because it is such an easy platform to tune. Now, after you have the four first modifications, you're going to want that front mount intercooler. The top mount intercooler just sucks. You need a front mount, so you're going to want to get a nice big TR. 35 intercooler, a Treadstone TR35 I believe it is. That's a massive front mount intercooler and it will do a great job at cooling your boost air temps when you start going for higher horsepower. Now, after you have the first uh, five modifications with that front mount, you're gonna want probably just a basic exhaust, like a three inch exhaust or some other uh, nice flowing exhaust. It's not really too important to have a crazy exhaust, you just want one that's three inches. Now after the exhaust is taken care of, you're going to want motor mounts. Uh, you need to replace, if you're going for a high horsepower, you're gonna need to replace all of your motor mounts to some crazy stiff motor mounts. If you're not going quite for 800 horsepower, you can get away with only doing two motor mounts, but as you go higher horsepower, you're gonna need really, really stiff motor mounts or solid motor mounts to make that power. So after you have your passenger, your driver, and your rear motor mount all taken care of with some solid ones, then you're set to go and you'll wanna move on to your engine and your turbo size. Now, the exhaust manifold, the stock one I mean, can flow about 550 wheel horsepower. So if you're not going above that, you only need to replace the turbo and you can go for a Garrett Precision or some other bolt-on turbo. Now I like Precision turbos because they only are oil cooled and oil cooling means there's only two ports on the turbo uh, that you need to worry about when you're installing it. So basically a Precision turbo is a little bit easier to install than a Garrett turbo or some other turbo that is also coolant cooled rather than just oil cooled. But as long as you have an upgraded turbo, you'll make a lot more power and get a little bit better gas mileage than stock because that bigger turbo doesn't spool right away. So your lower RPMs have a little bit less torque and a little bit uh, better fuel economy. But that's all coming down to your tune. If you have a really solid tune, that's what's gonna make the difference. Now, if you replace your exhaust manifold, you can go with a stock location or a relocation exhaust manifold. Now stock location is gonna be just fine in terms of power, but it is a little bit harder to install the turbo. Now a top mount setup uh, is what I run and it's a lot easier to get to the turbo because the turbo does sit right on top of the exhaust manifold. So if you can afford to get a top mount exhaust manifold, I would highly, highly recommend that. Now with a CPE exhaust manifold where it's stock location, that will make plenty of power. It's gonna flow really well. As long as you have a nice exhaust manifold, it doesn't matter if it's top mount or stock location, you can make up to five, or excuse me, up to 800 wheel horsepower with that. You might have to get a custom exhaust manifold if you wanna to try to go anything above that, but 800 is about the limit for uh, most Mazda speeds. There's a lot of like little things you can do to improve that, but that's about the limit. Now, after you have your exhaust manifold taken care of, you're gonna want to get a bigger turbo. So with a 800 horsepower build, you're gonna want probably a 64, 66 precision turbo 
or the equivalent Garrett Turbo, basically about a 65 to like 75 millimeter turbo. Uh, really, just a really, really big turbo, honestly. Yes, you're gonna have a lot of lag at that horsepower, but it's the only way to make that crazy of horsepower. If you're going for more like 500 horsepower, I recommend a Precision 5858 turbo because that will have a little bit better spool time, a little bit less lag, and it'll also be a little bit uh, more drivable if you're trying to daily drive your Mazda Speed. Now, after you have your turbo and your exhaust manifold taken care of, you're gonna want an intake manifold. Now, the stock intake manifold, when it's ported and polished with a VCTS delete, it'll flow about 500, 550 wheel horsepower. That's kind of pushing it, and that is the max it can do. If you upgrade that to say a JMF intake manifold, which a JMF is kind of the standard for high horsepower, then you can make about 800 wheel horsepower. They come in different versions for the JMF manifold. Some have ports for injectors, extra injectors, which is for aux filling, which we're going to be getting to in just a moment, but you need a JMF intake manifold that flows a lot better than stock and it's necessary for going anything above 550 wheel horsepower. There's a few other companies that make intake manifolds such as CPE or I believe Corksport, but I recommend the JMF one because it looks the best and usually flows the best. Let me know what you guys think. But after you have your intake manifold, your turbo, your exhaust manifold, you're still on stock engine. So you're gonna need to build your engine. Now, most people will keep the crank stock. You just wanna polish the crank, make sure it's in really good condition. Then you have forged rods and forged pistons. You're gonna want I-beam or I-beam plus rods if you're going for that 800 horsepower number. I have H-beam rods for my new engine. H-beam rods will hold, I believe, 500 wheel horsepower or 600 wheel horsepower. Basically, you just want really, really strong forged rods. And after you have that taken care of, you're gonna want forged pistons. I'm gonna be running Molly pistons, Molly 2618 material pistons, which should be good for 800 wheel horsepower. Any forged pistons uh, should be good for quite a high horsepower number. If you're really trying to hit that really high number of 800, then I believe the 2618 material for pistons is the best material for that. Uh, if you are trying to daily drive the car, people say you want a 40, uh, 40, 26 material or whatever, but you really don't need that. You can run that stronger material with a 2618 and you should be just fine for daily drivability issues. Now, after you have the pistons and rods taken care of, you're going to want to move to your head studs. You're going to need at least half inch head studs. Now it's quite expensive and you have to have a machine shop do that, but with half inch head studs, it'll take away any lifting issues of the head. That's what Artem runs in his Goliath Mazda Speed 3, the 800 horsepower crazy Speed 3. He runs half inch head studs and he says they're extremely helpful and nice to have. Now, if you're only going for 600 wheel horsepower, you can stay with just upgraded stock um, stock size of head uh, studs, but if you're going above that, you're really gonna want to go with the half inch head studs because they are just so much stronger and you're trying to force so much boost into your engine. So after you have your head studs taken care of, you're gonna wanna pour your head. Now that's quite expensive to get done, but if you're going for 800, you must pour your head. Usually they can take out the divider that is in your dual ports or they can just at least smooth everything out and make sure the head is nice and polished and ported. After you have the head ported, you're gonna want cams. Now Corksport makes cams and they're not necessary really to make 700 plus horsepower, but it is a good idea to have cams. And I believe there's a few other companies that make uh, some aftermarket cams that are bigger than Corksport. The reason why some people don't like Corksport cams is because they aren't massive and they don't give you that much of a gain. They also won't make your car sound all lopy like a V8. It'll sound basically the same as it normally does, but it's still a good idea to get some aftermarket cams. Now, after you have cams, you're gonna want springs and retainers. 
some 55 pound or 65 pound springs and retainers will be probably just fine for 800 wheel horsepower. You don't have to go crazy with those because uh, they're not like super, super important. But if you're trying to rev to about 8,000 RPM or 8,500 where Mazda speeds are maxed, uh, then you're definitely going to want some springs and retainers. Now, after your motor is built, your turbo is taken care of, your exhaust manifold, intake manifold, and everything else, you're going to want some fueling. The stock fueling on a Mazda speed three or six can only max out at about 350 wheel horsepower. So even with a massive turbo and all of those other mods we just talked about, a built motor, all of that, you still will max out your car at 350 wheel horsepower. Now, if you're going for above that, you're gonna need what's called aux filling. You can either run methanol or E85. You probably will want to go with E85 because it's way cheaper and a lot easier to run, but basically you'll run fifth or sixth port, which means you have two extra injectors that are installed into your intercooler piping uh, or via some other weird mount. I don't like fifth or sixth port as much. I would rather have true eighth port. Now they're doing the same thing. You're just adding injectors and then you get tuned on these injectors. The tuner basically takes care of making sure the car runs good with all of your mods and making sure that you have the right mods. But when you're running eighth port, you have an extra injector for each cylinder so you can make sure you have the best flow and best fueling possible. Now on pump gas, you're not gonna make more than 500 wheel horsepower, which is quite sad, but you have to run E85. It's just a better fuel. So once you, once you have E85, you have eighth port and your fueling setup taken care of, then you can go for 800 wheel horsepower. Now, if you have fifth or sixth port, you're probably gonna max out at 600 wheel horsepower. If you're running methanol injection, it's a kind of an unsafe option, but you will probably max that out at about 600 or 650 wheel horsepower. That's a pretty lofty goal though for methanol. 500 is a more comfortable goal for methanol injection. Uh, there's a whole lot of videos on all of these little modifications if you're unsure about what they actually do, but these are just the actual modifications that you're going to need to make the 800 horsepower. You are also going to need a blow off valve for your engine. Doesn't really matter what blow off valve, you're just gonna want a good one. I run the GFB blow off valve and it works great. There's a lot of other good options out there. Just check out the blow off valves for Mazda Speed, but you're definitely gonna need a nice one. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys like today's video. Be sure to subscribe and also check out the description for any modifications I missed. I'll put them all in the description. Also, you guys can comment any modifications you think are also important, but thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys tomorrow.